Hello friends, my name is Kishan and welcome you in this video tutorial. Uh, this is the continuation of uh, my previous video series and there we had started I mean exploring I mean best practices about the lambda expressions. So if you write lambda expression for functional interfaces then some of the key points always as a developer you should keep in mind. So in this continuation let's go through the second point so second point says use the at the rate functional interface annotation so basically you should always annotate your functional interface with at the rate functional interface at first this annotation seems to be useless even without it your interface would be treated as a functional as long as it has just one abstract method but imagine a big project with several interfaces it's hard to control everything manually. An interface which was designed to be functional could accidentally, accidentally be changed by the add, adding of other abstract methods. Uh, so if, if some developer is uh, not I mean, much aware about the how, how uh, what is the actually exact definition of a functional interface then they might make this kind of mistake they go and uh, if you do not uh, I mean specify at the right functional interface uh, in functional interface uh, uh, then they might add some additional abstract method so at that time compiler will not if you do, did not use at the right functional interface before the functional interface then this will not flag any error right but using the other functional interface annotation the compiler will trigger an error in response to any attempt to break the predefined structure of functional interface it is also a very handy tool to make your application architecture easier to understand for other de developers so so here in this slide i have i have written so use this so if you have an interface is foo and which contains one abstract method then annotate this this interface as a uh, at the rate functional interface so this is clear indication for other developer this is a functional interface and if any developer goes and they try to add one more abstract method then immediately compiler will flag an error message so instead of just leaving like this right so first approach is preferred one than second one so that's that that's this is very theoretical and these things uh, you should always keep in mind now next point in this series i would say instantiate functional interface with lambda expressions right the compiler will allow you to use an inner class to instantiate a functional interface however this can lead to very verbose code you should prefer lambda expression instead of writing inner anonymous class for a functional interface method right so suppose if you want to create a thread so we know that runnable is an uh, functional interface so of course we can make use of the uh, lambda expression right so if you define if you want to define lambda expression for uh, runnable interface then this is the way to define uh, and this is the way to uh, define uh, define uh, define anonymous inner class for runnable interface so of course this is the first approach is the preferable because la uh, runnable is the lambda expression right? the lambda expression approach can be used for any suitable interface from the old libraries it is usable for the interfaces like runnable comparator and there are many other uh, interfaces which is having only one uh, abstract method now let's try to understand this theory, these things through an example so as we know that if you try to search a runnable interface by pressing ctrl shift t so let's write runnable so this is an interface and this is a functional interface because this is this interface has only one abstract method so here you can you can define a runnable interface runnable uh, implementation of runnable interface you can define as a onimus class like this right so but this is not preferable approach right so here i would say 
uh, like my task right and you finally create a thread go to new thread so thread is having a lot of constructor one of the constructor who accepts runnable object as a target so this runnable object we can pass it over here and we can spawn the thread by calling the start method on thread object right so let's call a start method and this is the anonymous inner class way to create a thread but this is not recommended approach right as i said runnable is a, a functional interface so uh, this behavior you can you can define as a lambda expression so writing a uh, writing code like this this is very verbose and very ugly kind of code instead of this you can define a lambda expression right so i'm going to comment this code and instead of that writing this so long code we can define lambda expression for this right and instead of defining this much amount of code you can define same thing is in the single line of code right and you get the same functionality right so second approach is the preferable one because we know that runnable is the functional interface so you can uh, you can define you can define uh, this behavior as a lambda expression right so i hope you understood these two points so that's all in this video tutorial in next video tutorial i'll come up with some new best practices for lambda expression so please be with me over there and this code i'm going to upload on the uh, uh, github and github location i'm going to specify in the video description itself so thanks for watching this video and see you in the next video tutorial